Hello, good weekend to all. Okay, so uh, bringing you a review of European markets for the weekend trading session, the 2nd of February 2020. 2020 already, okay, so understood. Now, everything is a risk off. Uh, I'm not really going to go over the narrative. I think you already know. Coronavirus phase certainly seemed to be center stage and uh, certainly seeing risk aversion everywhere. Okay, now Friday session, logically a lot of individuals would have panic sold and it certainly uh, certainly was exacer exacerbated the the stories certainly went into uh, shall we say a uh, peak panic mode okay with the news releasing regarding the the uh, potential case in new york and that certainly did uh, obviously spread fears as well and uh, going into a weekend with the potential uh, significant increase in people potentially dying and being infected etc etc and certain two certainly two cases over the the weekend where people have actually potentially died outside of china so that certainly isn't something that needs to be uh, obviously ignored uh, also given the fact that uh, initially the world health organization uh, didn't encourage the um, total shutdown of uh, potential flights or uh, potential transportation in and out of china which certainly helped risk and then obviously when the americans and everybody else started to do so that obviously turned risk negative. Okay, so that certainly is a f scenario and that's a factor. And also given the fact that central banks were on tap last week, we had the BOE and we had the uh, FOMC as well. And a lot of individuals were certainly looking for that Kool-Aid or that potential sugar rush, given the fact that uh, we've got dovish central banks and uh, given the fact that the Bank of England certainly failed to uh, hint towards a, a more than expected dovish uh, rhetoric. And also along with the, uh, the Federal Reserve certainly maintained it to a large extent, but... The BOE did it, and that obviously uh, caused the FTSE certainly to be hit hard as well. And also, given the fact that Brexit certainly became a reality. So, where are we now? That's a question. Okay, so from my understanding and my interpretation thus far, regardless of what's happened last week, where do we go from here now? My understanding uh, is, given the fact that China now is potentially unleashing stimulus, well, not potentially, is unleashing stimulus, okay, rate cuts, uh, support, uh, fiscal support, monetary policy support, certainly will put a floor under the market now if the asian markets certainly fail to hold that potential floor then obviously we are going to see a risk of uh, being exacerbated and obviously thin liquidity overnight etc can certainly create wild swings so, but from my understanding and my interpretation same with friday as well i'm certainly buying the dip okay uh, i certainly expect a short squeeze uh, and i'll explain my argument as well so here goes okay so in terms of risk currencies, let's start off with risk currencies first and we'll take it from there. Okay, so in terms of risk currencies, to bring up the chart of the Aussie USD. Okay, so daily chart certainly is into horizontal support. Okay, so daily chart to me is indicating that we are in support and therefore we are looking for a potential bounce in the Aussie on the back of obviously Chinese rate cuts, Chinese stimulus, etc, etc. And obviously uh, the conviction and so on and so forth with regards to the Chinese government. And to a large extent, the bearish news certainly is baked into the cake. That's my interpretation. Also, with regards to the Kiwi as well, if you look at the daily chart on the Kiwi, and we are now obviously flushing lower. Uh, we do have horizontal support, though, at, at this uh, key juncture here. Okay, so this zone around 0.6430 is a key zone on the Aussie or the Kiwi dollar, should I say. Now, bear in mind, the Aussie is already weak due to the uh, obviously the, the, the fires that have ravaged the country. And uh, given the fact that the RBA won't potentially want to cut rates. So that's something that certainly you need to take into account if you are trading the Aussie. But from my understanding, as a risk barometer, uh, let alone the uh, internal, obviously, uh, monetary policy of the country, uh, my understanding and my interpretation, just observing this chart right now, certainly looking for a bounce in risk. And, and the catalyst, obviously, is the fact that China is certainly unleashing that stimulus, which will negate any potential loss. In, in economic activity to a large extent uh, if anything it will be compensated in the long run and uh, certainly does cushion the blow to a large extent and certainly will stop the rut in risk aversion as well so okay so moving on then so key, the key currency parameters from my understanding my interpretation are the aussie and kiwi also you need to cross reference that with the usd jpy as well so again watch out here we are coming in to support usd jpy so bear that in mind. But having said that, US data on Friday was very very weak as well. So again, that did uh, hurt risk sentiment to a large extent. Uh, so bear that in mind, US data on Friday certainly came in weaker. Okay, I think it was regarding the Chicago PMI. If I can recollect, uh, there was another batch of data that was certainly weaker and that certainly 
uh, obviously trigger the risk of sentiment. Now, again, 108 level, watch out for key support around the USD JPY, which indicates support on global, uh, obviously, risk. Okay, moving on to equities now. So German DAX, let's start with the German DAX, as you can see here, free fall. Uh, it certainly didn't help as well. On Friday, we had weaker GDP numbers, okay, out of France, uh, Italy, and Germany to a large extent, okay, and that certainly uh, obviously triggered that risk aversion in European uh, equities, okay. So uh, let me just quickly move to a daily chart here of German DAX. Again, now we are coming into support, so around the 12,950, 12,900 zone. Certainly looking for a potential rally here on the German DAX, and they're certainly looking for a short squeeze. The French CAC 40 now, this one here is is certainly is a, is under pressure given the fact that uh, obviously the pension uh, reforms and uh, the protests certainly have, he have hurt economic sentiment in France. Okay, so again, watch out for potential support in this zone here, okay, which is 5720. So we're around the 5800 zone, I think we did breach that on Friday, okay, so... Let me just quickly double check the low on French CAC was around the 5790 zone. So from my perspective, 5730 zone on the French CAC certainly is key support. So watch out for support there. Now in terms of Euro stocks, let's just bring the chart here. The Euro stocks on the daily chart. Again, you're into the FIB 75% retracement. So again, key support zone. If that fails and you are looking at uh, key support 5615, certainly looking for a pop on the Euro stocks. Given the fact that the, the, thing, the market closed around the 5630 zone, uh, in after hours trading, so watch out there. So again, key key support levels, especially the German DAX, is dictating that. Now the FTSE 100. Now again, the failure of the BOE to obviously uh, err on the side of uh, dovishness. Uh, also, the failure of the BOE to potentially uh, uphold or even talk up a potential rate cut, etc. Uh, basically, it wasn't as dovish as everybody expected, even though Mr. Carney was indicating towards that direction, and therefore markets obviously punished. Uh, the FTSE with the sterling obviously moving higher now. Over the weekend, we have had some negative sterling data uh, or news regarding sterling. Okay, given the uh, hard Brexit fears certainly coming back again. Uh, and again, that certainly should put a, a weakness on or dampener on uh, GBP. And therefore, you are looking for a potential run in the FTSE. Also, Chinese stimulus certainly will help commodities to a large extent. And the FTSE 100, as you can see in the daily chart now, key support around here at that FIB 75%, which is 7250 if that were to go, then you are looking at 7140 on the FTSE 100. Now, given the fact that we've fallen from 7, 700 all the way down to 7280, one would expect a potential sh powerful short squeeze on the FTSE back up to 7400, potentially 7450. The weekly chart on the FTSE, certainly from my perspective, severely, severely oversold uh, at this juncture. But that's the market for you folks. Okay, we could certainly potentially test the 200 MA at 7200 and even test 7080 on the back of Brexit concerns as well so again keep that in mind now in terms of u.s equity so let's see where where we stand here daily chart the s p back into key or approaching key resist uh, gap fill support around the 3216 you've got gap fill at 3205 3206 okay so you're looking for a potential pop on the u.s equities if anything the u.s equities are the most bullish out of all the indices so bear that in mind okay the weekly chart certainly is, isn't a, obviously a pretty picture at present, but nevertheless, it still remains bullish, okay? And we are looking for a potential pop on the S&P 500 for my interpretation. Now, we did hold key support around this zone at 3214. The next gap fill is at 3206. Uh, again, I can't really see a real catalyst for that to be potentially closed. There was obviously the weaker economic data, but... Given the fact that Trump is in office and uh, we all know exactly what the, the game that he plays with regards to talking about the market and creating short squeezes, not to mention the fact that he's already dangled the uh, fiscal uh, stimulus carrot, given the fact that he wants to go for tax cuts for the middle income individuals. And this certainly will be a, a great buying opportunity for uh, traders, from my understanding and my perspective. Uh, again, if we do close the gap at 3206, so my buying zone would really be around 3215, 3205 solid solid uh, risk reward for my interpretation and uh, that's even if we get the opportunity so you're looking for a, a potential gap higher uh, over the weekend that's what i'm expecting and looking for 3250 potentially even 3280 on the s p 500 in the back of chinese stimulus okay and that certainly is bullish for us equities just bear that in mind okay uh, now the only downside obviously would be the fact that uh, chinese economic growth is slowing 
and therefore the uh, the phase one deal may not be upheld. But again, I think given these circumstances, the uh, U.S. certainly will take that into consideration regardless, and Chinese stimulus and rate cuts certainly will spur that and will certainly compensate for that loss of potential output. Okay, also the FTSE MIB as well. Uh, obviously, the uncertainty regarding Italy, etc., that certainly remains. And given the fact that weak economic data came out as well, uh, keep an eye out for the FTSE MIB. Okay, even though we did hit a new high, then obviously we reversed quite sharply ever since. But we are now coming into a short squeeze of territory. The Nasdaq remains bullish. So again, that certainly is a leader. So keep an eye on the Nasdaq as well. Let's quickly bring that up for you. Dow Jones, the transport spots were at it as well. Okay, Dow Jones transport certainly coming to 200 MA. Horizontal support, certainly looking for a potential short squeeze here. Okay, and the Dow. And the Dow transport, so I not got a chart of the Nasdaq here. Russell 2000 as well, again, looking in, coming into support. Gap fill support. Okay, looking for a potential bounce. So overall, looking for a rally on European equities and US equities as well. FTSE 250, again, coming into previous resistance equal support. So again, looking for a, for a potential bounce in the FTSE. Now, the other, uh, uh, obviously, charts I want to cover as well is the chart of the copper index. Okay, so daily chart of, the, of copper certainly coming into key support now. Uh, we've obviously flushed, I think, 12 or 13 days in a row now. Again, horizontal support on copper. So given the fact that we've got Chinese stimulus, rate cuts, and obviously... Uh, uh, all sorts of uh, potential measures to support the Chinese economy certainly will trigger a short squeeze and trigger a rebound in commodities. In terms of oil, again, my interpretation of oil is that we are into key horizontal support and again looking for a potential pop in oil as well, given the geopolitical tensions that we certainly face. So again, look for a potential rally there. Okay. I think that's a wrap, really, folks, uh, from my understanding. Uh, again, Bitcoin certainly seems to be a barometer now for risk by the look of things. And as you can see here, we are now coming into resistance for Bitcoin. So that indicates, therefore, risk on in the equity market and a dump in, uh, obviously, a risk aversion. Also, if you look at the chart of gold, let me just quickly give you an insight there. Have I got a chart here? Aussie, copper, no gold. Let me just quickly bring up gold for you, folks. One second. And you'll see that gold certainly is into resistance as well. Okay, so daily chart, we're back into that uh, potential topping tail on the daily chart too. So for my interpretation basically is that uh, risk now will be embraced, okay? And uh, we're certainly looking for a short squeeze, okay? Uh, in uh, the equity market and looking for a move higher. That's my summation and I've given you my arguments accordingly. On that note, I wish you the very best for the trading week ahead and uh, goodbye from me. Take care.